one, we will call this special meeting of the City of Punta Gorda of City Council to order at 931. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we are here today to discuss new business. Consideration of terms of settlement agreement with the matter of the City of Punta Gorda versus Charlotte County, Julian Wright, R&D Cattle, LLC. Good morning and thank you all for coming on such short notice. Um, I attempted to um, outline as best as I could in my, uh, in my memo that hopefully you all had an opportunity to review, uh, kind of how we got to where we are and um, uh, what uh, what the city's objectives were uh, in initiating the uh, the challenge of the county's proposed comprehensive plan amendment, and how the settlement that um, uh, that the attorneys have um, uh, talked about would address those concerns and objectives that the city had. And I think that uh, the settlement as, uh, as it has uh, shaped out and is in the, um, the, the text on page four of my memo, uh, pretty much gives the city uh, um, the knowledge that uh, uh, we can protect the water quality and water quantity of Shell Creek at the critical times uh, of extreme drought or pro prolonged dryness, which is one of the things that we um, were most concerned about, and also gives us the opportunity to be better informed about decisions and activities uh, that may affect Shell Creek to give us a, a better opportunity to be involved in the process. And I, and I think that when we, you may recall, when we were first made aware of the um, comprehensive plan uh, amendments uh, it was already fairly late in the day and uh, and we were playing catch-up to a large extent to become familiar with what the issues were what the facts are and uh, and you can review the um, I think the, the minutes uh, or even the video of the first meeting where the City Council authorized me to uh, file a petition that the intention was to preserve our rights with an opportunity to um, be able to come up to speed, see what the the effect of the proposed amendment would be upon Shell Creek, and hopefully to um, uh, work out a resolution short of litigation. Uh, unfortunately, the, the settlement comes much further along in the process than I would have hoped, but the, but the benefit to the city is that we have learned a lot about um, Shell Creek. We've learned a lot about the potential impacts to Shell Creek, um, and I think that will be of great benefit to us moving forward. Um, and I pre prefer not to say too much more about uh, my thoughts uh, about the case until the settlement is signed, sealed, and delivered. So I, I, I'd be, certainly be willing to answer any questions you might have if I am reluctant to give you the answer that you looking for please understand the sensitivity and the reasons why I mean, um, there is a, a blank uh, on page four in the first paragraph um, regarding the um, period of time uh, um, within, within which there would be a, a no flow over the dam that would trigger the uh, the ability of the city to ask the excavators to, to pump fresh water and I'm I was just told um, that the uh, after consideration, the uh, the number that would go into that uh, blank would be 30 days. Understanding that, um, and I think Tom Jackson could probably answer this better than I can. What we're talking about is an extremely rare and extreme situation that, since um, I guess 1999, 2000 time frame, has not repeated itself. But, but it does give us the opportunity to have the ability to move very quickly 
in times of need to protect the quality and quantity of the water at Shell Creek by having an available source of fresh water. So uh, with that, um, I would ask you to uh, approve the terms uh, as they're outlined, um, which would then um, give the county the opportunity to consider and, and approve um, the terms as well. I'm advised that the, um, the intervenors, the, the miners, have approved the terms as they've been written. So that's uh, all I really have to say on the matter. If, um, if it does not get uh, um, approved, are we still preserving our right to move forward? Oh, um, absolutely. In fact, if it, doesn't get, if, it, if it doesn't get approved, we probably have a trial next, next Thursday. Right. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm optimistic that, that uh, the attorneys for all the parties uh, represented their clients well and, um, and that it will be approved by the other parties formally. Move approval. Discussion. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, have we met the statutory requirements for calling a special meeting? And uh, what statutory requirements are there? Yeah, the, the statutory requirements are that we um, post reasonable notice under the circumstances. And, and Karen, can you explain what, what notification, if any, was provided? The um, agenda was posted on the website. Uh, it was also posted um, where we regularly post other agenda meeting notices in City Hall. And that meets the statutory requirements? Yes, it does. Okay, okay that's fine. Uh, then can I continue? Sure. Okay. Um, section 2 on page 4 talks about permitting. The City of Pony Gorda shall be responsible for the cost of any pumping equipment and permitting. What type of permitting are we are we talking about? Is it is, could you explain that a little bit, David? Uh, the the um, ultimately it, it may be necessary to obtain a permit from uh, Southwest Florida Water Management District, um, and uh, I, I'm fairly I, I believe that uh, in 1999 there, the, the the subject may have been uh, initiated with Swift Mud because something. A scenario like this was at least being considered that at that time SWIFTMA does have the capability of of issuing emergency permits so that they can move very quickly um, I don't have any specifics for you at the moment uh, regarding the, the actual process of getting that permit um, I, I don't think that there's much precedent for this type of action but I'm fairly certain that uh, if we had to move forward with it, um, Swift Mud would uh, would work with us to authorize the limited withdrawal from the superficial aquifer that we're talking about. So it, it's not a significant withdrawal from the uh, the aquifer or from from the lake, so to speak, that, that we're talking about. Um, it it would be significant enough to avoid substantial adverse impacts to the creek. What we don't want is the creek to have to go totally dry right. at a point where we don't have enough water in the reservoir to provide um, uh, for our drinking water sources. Also understand that um, before it gets to this point, we would have already exhausted perhaps the utilization of the interconnect or um, uh, pulling more water from the deeper aquifer that we would run through our um, RO plant. Um, and this would be used more, I think, to supplement or, or protect the, the uh, animals and critters and plants and stuff within Shell Creek so that it doesn't go to a point of where it couldn't recover. Okay, I just have one more question. Mm -hmm. so we can move on. Uh, the court in the same uh, paragraph the cost for any pumping should be borne by the city of Ponte Gorda. what kind of cost are we, are we do we have a handle on what kind of cost they are and why should the city be responsible for those costs well to answer your last question first <clears throat> is that was part of the negotiation you know we 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 got the the uh, the other parties to agree that they would be responsible for the cost of water quality testing, which um, I'm told is not insignificant. 
um, and that they also would pay for the cost of um, the permit fee, which we don't really know what it would be, but that also might not be uh, insignificant. As far as the pumping is concerned, I had some initial conversations um, uh, with the fire chief who I thought might be the most knowledgeable about pumping I'm water. Sure. Good choice. <laughs> and, um, and he informed me that uh, the cost of that equipment, we may already have that equipment uh, in our inventory or um, would be able to rent it at a fairly inexpensive cost. We're not talking about running permanent lines, you know, and that's why I talked to, talk, talk to the fire chief because I thought we could use uh, fire hoses perhaps. I don't know how many would be necessary, but this would be a temporary stopgap measure mm -hmm. if necessary, but is available to us under the agreement if it becomes necessary. I could just add to that. We, we own pumps capable of pumping 1 million gallons a day in utilities, and we routinely deploy them to dewater stuff. So okay. it would be the cost of the fuel and, of course, the, the manpower to do it, which we would do anyway. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'd like just to make a comment sure. uh, relative to a couple of things that are germane. <coughs> to this. Um, first of all, I think the language is great to solve the issue at this moment. Um, as I had mentioned in the, at the last meeting that I attended a fracking meeting, there is going to be an issue coming for counties and municipalities that we should be united on. And a very similar type of, in, of uh, subject of this, particularly if fracking starts moving and so forth, on how to maintain control over mineral rights within our own boundaries. I think this is a template that we should be proactively utilizing as we go forward as a group. Um, secondly, just a comment to about pumping from these lines and so forth. Tom and I had attended a forum yesterday, and uh, one of the things that they said was is that the Florida doesn't have a shortage of water, it has a shortage of storage of water. And one of their solutions was specifically to have big holes in the ground that you can store water. And this certainly fits within that genre. The other thing that this also allows us is the other issue they're saying that cities needed to do to control their water supplies is diversity. And this lends a third level of diversity as we get the RO. So I just wanted to make those comments that we're going in the right direction. I think this is in the right direction, but I think that in the future we still need to protect ourselves against some other similar issues that may come to come to bear in the next 10 years or so. That's all. Can you speak to our review of the application? Yeah, I mean, um, as I kind of tried to outline a little bit in, um, in the memo, um, we were not receiving, um, as a matter of course, information uh, regarding uh, modifications to the regulations and modifications to the comprehensive plan that we all thought we w were entitled to under the uh, intergovernmental cooperation element of the comprehensive plan. During, um, during testimony at the hearing and um, uh, in depositions in preparation for a hearing, it became somewhat apparent that county staff, at least the ones that were involved uh, in this process, who unfortunately are no longer with the county, may have had a different understanding of the degree of, cooper of cooperation with the city uh, on matters like that. Um, and so I wanted to have in here a clear understanding <clears throat> of the, that the city would be notified of these permit activities for a, a renewals or new permits and what have you. Um, and if the county failed to, to um, live up to its obligation under the agreement, that there would be a, a mechanism available for us to enforce that agreement. And so um, it would give us the, the knowledge and the opportunity of being kept abreast of, of things that for the most part I'm sure that would be as a matter of routine just either not commented on or the city would say we don't have a comment or if there was a reason to provide a comment um, we would provide the comment within the time frame agreed upon with the understanding that the county could not grant a permit until we've issued um, our comments and and with and hopefully uh, with a better working um, cooperation between the city and, and the county, um, they'll give uh, adequate consideration to, to the comments that we have. And so that's what I hoped to achieve with, with the settlement. Nancy? 
Um, who remains to um, approve this? Um, in, in a formal sense, it still needs to go back to the county commission for okay. adopt, for approval, same okay. way as we're <clears throat> doing it today. Mm -hmm. And then the and then the minors uh, who were parties to the um, proceeding will need to s enter into the agreement. And also, there are some minors that weren't parties to the agreement, but are willing to be bound by the agreement because they're one of the the number of, of the minors that are affected by the um, amendment, they also will be signing the agreement. So we are the and, first? And, and we're the first. Okay. And, and I think the understanding is that if it's okay with the city, the next step would be that we were going to um, uh, suspend the deposition of Todd Kincaid that was supposed to be, um, actually was supposed to start yesterday, that's been postponed a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and there's a time frame because there's going to need to be a drafting of the uh, agreement to put not only these terms in, but the standard boilerplate terms relating to enforcement, what have you. And there's uh, and if we can't get that all done by January 31st of, of next year, then um, we've got the right. They've got the right. We all have the right to, to st um, uh, start up the uh, litigation again. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, hopefully, and 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 I think we're pretty optimistic that that's not going to be necessary. Okay. I so we, we have a have motion. A, I'll make we a have second. a motion to approve. I'll make a second. So we have a motion, a second to approve the agreement. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. In the Thank long you. run, I believe that you'll see that this effort was well worthwhile. I, I, I preferred not to go through the added expense to, if we could achieve what we achieved here, and. Uh, but ultimately, you'll see that this was for the public's benefit. Can oh, we, I feel a whole lot smarter. Can we have some further discussion now that we've approved this motion? There is, is, that, a, is that appropriate? Uh, or? You know what? Uh, I would hate to say something that might be misconstrued and cause the other parties that seem to be on board with this to change their position. Uh, I'd be very happy smart. to speak with you one on one if, if you want. But. Council member comments, Kim? Uh, nothing, thank you. Lighting of the village tomorrow. I won't be there, but you guys all have a good time. We'll get it done. <laughs> <laughs> veterans Day, groundbreaking, oh, phenomenal beautiful. success for the city and our veterans. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was really heartwarming to watch the governor give out probably up to 200 medals and still have them on the order. We did, he did not bring enough. And it was just wow. a terrific event. It was great. City manager comments? Um, I just want to thank David. He has done a lot of work on this. Uh, he understood it probably better than most of us in the room, and, and he persevered. And, and we actually have a solution that will help protect the city, and, and I thank you, David. Thank you. Well, I'm, so this gives me an opportunity to reciprocate staff, Joan LeBeau, and, and um, uh, the rest of the city's staff uh, was very helpful in getting this ready, as well as the some of the representatives from Chenette, they, they, they were quite helpful as well. Mm -hmm. Nice to have them right in our backyard. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Any other comments? Not at this time. Okay. Gary? Um, I just think it's a simply elegant solution, and I appreciate it. Thank you, David. Thank you. I think any time, my comment, any time that we can bring people together to in, in a collaborative manner like this, I think it's great. So, David, thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh, since I see some of the attorneys, particularly Jerry Wexler in the audience, uh, I want to thank Jerry personally for uh, um, helping. She was sort of, the, I think, the catalyst because uh, I presented a, a proposal earlier. Was it last week or, or beginning? It seems like who knows. Well, I, but I, I, and we both have the last week, two weeks, so I have no yeah, idea the time. Yeah, and <laughs> um, and she was um, she was very instrumental in getting everybody on board. Thank you, Ms. Waxler. Thank you, Jerry. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Citizens' thank you, Gary, comments. You. Would anybody like to comment? State your name for us, please. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Jerry Waxler with the Mercury Law Firm. I have felt from the very beginning that this was something that ought to have been discussed and that there was always a settlement that was achievable. And I am very grateful to, to David Levin and now to you all that we were able to find language to work cooperatively and we can put this behind us and, and move forward for the benefit of all of the parties. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jerry. Thank, Thank you. Any other citizens' comments? Seeing none, we are adjourned.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. <clears throat>